My name is Christian von Königsegg. For half of my life, I've been on the quest to be a leader in the hypercar industry, utilizing Swedish design combined with visionary technical solutions. So welcome to our old showroom, our old factory showroom. We turned it into our prototype build room and moved the showroom up in the office where we got some more space. And this is better use of the area. So what you see here is our Regera test car. This car is prepared for different crashes from different angles and then it's being rebuilt again for again different crash tests. What we're doing now is actually upgrading it so we can drive the car as well. Uh, for abuse testing. Uh, the battery system, the electrical components needs to pass uh, abuse tests, hitting curbs really hard and shock loading things and so on to, to pass homologation. So it's really being used extensively for many different purposes. A big car company would have many cars doing these different tasks, but as our cars are so expensive and take so long to build, it's quicker and cheaper to rebuild it after each test than starting from scratch, as long as it can take it. And the car, we designed it through the design stages that the monocoque isn't destroyed in any of these tests. It's bodywork, it's panels, it's subframes, electrical components and so on that we, re we changed, not the, the, the main structure of the car. And that's also good for our customers in the end because in normal situations of incidents and so on, your whole, whole car is not ruined basically. And now behind, this is the show car we made for the Geneva Motor Show. It's the first Regera with the production spec. And it's been getting all the installations of electronic systems, our new Hydra Coupe uh, hydraulic coupling, our 4G connectivity, uh, the Apple CarPlay system and so on. And we will really put this through its paces through the summer and start showing it to the customers and journalists who will also experience the car. And we're really excited to have reached that point. And in parallel to that, we've started the production of the first customer car. Follow me and I'll show you a little bit more inside. Now that the rear hood is off, it's a little bit easier to see what's, what's going on underneath the skin. So what, what we see here at the furthest back, we have two coolers. One is for the three electrical motors. And each electrical motor needs an inverter like this one. Here we have two for the rear motors, one left and right. And then we have one on the bulkhead for the uh, motor on the crankshaft. And those three inverters have one cooler and the three electrical motors have one cooler. These coolers are quite big uh, for an electric car. But if you want to keep on driving lap after lap on the numbering, even electrical systems need quite a lot of cooling. And you can never have too much of it. Running systems coolers usually means more power and better efficiency. So you, the strategy should always be package as big as you can, but make them as light and unobtrusive as you can at the same time. So uh, I think we mentioned before on the show that we have this exhaust looking thing. It's actually, you can't see it here right now, but we have a nice oval exhaust here. It's actually the exhaust from these coolers that cool the electrical motors and inverters. So jokingly, we call it the electrical exhaust. So I guess in the winter, you can have some hot smoking air coming from it. But the real exhaust sits on the sides, which well, we don't have it here now, but it's these titanium uh, hollow fins, which are part of the Venturi tunnels. And you can see the, the suspension is fairly similar to, um, to the Agera. We have the triplex suspension, we have the active ride height, we have the active shock absorbers both for bump and rebound, uh, we have active aerodynamics, flaps underneath the front similar to the Agera again, active foldable uh, top mounted rear wing which we've shown in another episode. Um, but we have kind of moved things forward a little bit 
uh, the wheelbase is similar, but we turned the wishbones around and modify them to shorten the whole rear subframe of the car in order to fit these parts here without making the car longer. What's also different on, on the Regera compared to the Agera is that we have made the car, the engine and transmission, the direct drive transmission, uh, not part of the rear subframe, but it sits on active rubber mounts that we can stiffen up with an electric pulse. This means we have less um, mechanical engine noise inside the car. Uh, theoretically and practically, the rear subframe becomes slightly heavier as we cannot use the engine and transmission to uh, help for stiffness. So we have to create the stiffening elements around. But apart from that, we get um, a little bit less mechanical noise in the car. And that mechanical noise actually enjoy in the Agera. It makes you really part of the car. You're one with the machine, you feel and hear everything. But this car has slightly different philosophy. You still hear the rumble and you get a sense of the combustion engine and the drivetrain. But there's a little bit more insulation and isolation from that part to make it um, really, really livable on a daily basis. And you can drive on the highway for six, seven hours at, in Germany at high speeds and you come out totally refreshed. It's, it's more that. So while the Agera is more track focused, even though it's really good on the road as well, it's just nuances. It's not a huge difference, but it's just nuances. Um, and uh, it was exciting for us to, to show everyone that we can do both, basically. Also, in, we can see here, inside this different looking central tunnel, which goes a little bit wider, we have the battery pack. The Regera is a hybrid, but as the battery pack is only four and a half kilowatt hours today, we actually started out with seven and a half kilowatt hours because that was the smallest amount of energy we could have to extract 500 kilowatts. But with the latest battery technology we have implemented, which is similar to what you find in the winning Formula One cars, and you can't really buy over the counter anything like that, or even officially from some battery suppliers. With that technology, we can extract 500 kilowatts from four and a half kilowatt hour battery pack and from only 75 kilos of weight. Uh, the lightest pack commercially available pack I know of apart from this pack which you can extract 500 kilowatts from is the Tesla uh, P90D pack or, or formerly P85D pack where, where you have 600 kilos to extract 500 kilowatts. So the, the low weight and compactness of this pack in comparison to how much power you can momentarily get out of it is totally off the charts, really. We have almost one megawatt of power from the combustion engine in this car. It's 1,200 horsepower. So, and we have uh, regenerative braking. So we don't need a big pack to keep the level uh, full in the pack because we can regen and charge anytime we want and at very high sea uh, rates. So uh, still you can drive a couple of kilometers, of course, on, on, uh, on just a battery pack. Um, that, that's still possible. It's not something that's maybe we're going to homologate for each country because it's a different homologation process that you can drive in, in pure electrical mode, but technically the car can do it. And in, in countries where it's not homologated, you can do it like uh, for um, uh, fenced-in areas or private areas and so on. It's really up to the user, I guess. Working from the idea to a show car and then driving it and seeing it working for the first time, is kind of nerve-wracking and exciting, but when it actually works better than ever a vision, it's, it's so exciting. And on top of that, seeing our customer base really uh, embracing the product and, and, and taking it to heart and understanding it, even though it's so different, uh, is, is really beyond our wildest dreams that I mean, we were sold out for three years. It's really a reception we wouldn't even have dared to dream of. But we're trying to catch up and expand the company and, and build them faster than we originally planned so people don't have to wait so long.